but in the absence of uh, it, it till till the action is taken you do support the demand for an economic embargo of sri lanka it was i who brought that resolution in the assembly here i moved that resolution myself in fact we moved two resolutions in the in the recently held assembly session one resolution called for all those guilty of war crimes to be proclaimed as war criminals by the united nations organization and to see to it that they were proceeded against in the international court and in order to compel the sri lankan government to accord equal rights to tamil citizens on par with the sinhalese and to rehabilitate them and enable them to lead lives of dignity and self respect in order to make the sri lankan government fall in line with this demand i specifically emphasized in the resolution that the government of india should act along with other like minded nations to impose an economic embargo on the sri lankan government until it complied with this request that was one of the main resolutions the other resolution was for the retrieval of kachatheepu now i have filed a suit in the supreme court in 2008 because right from 1991 onwards when i first became the chief minister again and again repeatedly i have been urging the center to do something about kachatheepu to try to retrieve it or at least to take the island on a lease in perpetuity to enable our fishermen to fish in the waters around kachatheepu but the center was totally unresponsive so finally in 2008 when i was the leader of the opposition in my capacity as general secretary of my party i filed a suit in the supreme court praying that the supreme court should direct the ceding of kachatheepu to sri lanka as null and void i quoted the instance of berwari in the 1950s when uh, pandit jawaharlal nehru was the prime minister he wanted to cede berwari in west bengal uh, to pakistan at that time mr b c roy was the chief minister of west bengal he approached the supreme court and the supreme court gave an order in 1960 clearly laying down that when any part of indian territory was sought to be ceded to a foreign country that proposal would have to be placed in both houses of parliament it would have to be ratified by both houses of parliament and for that purpose a constitutional amendment would have to be brought and approved by both houses True. of parliament so in view of that order berubari could not be ceded to pakistan until today it remains a part of west bengal so that a supreme court order is very much there that being the case in 1974 when uh, kachatheepu was ceded by the indira gandhi government to sri lanka mr karnanidhi was the chief minister of tamil nadu why did he not make use of this order of the supreme court that was won by mr b c roy of west bengal why did he not go to the supreme court and try to stop the ceding of uh, kachatheepu to sri lanka but he did not do it he just uh, allowed it to happen and uh, in 1976 also when the second agreement was signed between india and sri lanka even then mr karnanidhi was the chief minister so now i have filed a suit in the supreme court in 2008 praying for a direction from the supreme court that this ceding of kachatheepu itself is null and void because it was not placed in parliament it was not not ratified by parliament no constitutional amendment was brought for this purpose and now in the second resolution that i got passed in the assembly recently i have implemented the government of tamil nadu in this case through the revenue department this jalanta did sonia gandhi ask you to have tea with her when she called you come on uh, arnab can't you think of anything else to ask me ma'am i'm asking you because it was all over the press it was all over the well, press well i'm not responsible for that but is there a meeting happening Pardon? Is there a meeting happening between you and Ms. Sonia Gandhi? No, you know very the well there wasn't matter. any meeting. There was. I, I had been to Delhi only once after taking over as Chief Minister. I just met the Prime Minister. That's all, and I met the media persons. That's all. 
So there is no proposed tea meeting or a tea appointment. No, there was no such proposal. I think that's very significant. Ms. Jalata, may I ask you finally to expound a little bit on what you said? I also said yes. that in view of the fact that the Congress has made it very clear that its alliance with the DMK continues, and in view of the fact that the DMK is still very much a constituent of the Congress-led coalition government at the center, it would not be appropriate for me to call on Mrs. Sonia Gandhi at this uh, juncture. I think that's quite categorical. Ms. Jalita, you said the people would like to see a strong and authoritative center. And part of your observations in that answer were also about strategic issues. You mentioned Pakistan, you mentioned our key strategic enemies. I'd like you to elaborate a little bit on areas where you feel the central government has not been authoritative recently. You ask me specific questions, I'll respond. Pakistan, for example. There's been an ongoing debate, I'm sure you've seen it, in the context of the damming of the river Brahmaputra, which affects the northeastern states. You've had strong views on China. I remember you spoke about it in our last meeting, in that context. That specifically is, uh, Pakistan yes. and China. That's what I meant. Now, this recent news about China planning to construct a number of dams, across the Brahmaputra and divert the waters of the Brahmaputra to its arid northern regions and prevent that water from flowing into India. This is a serious cause of concern for every right-thinking patriotic citizen of India, for every citizen who is concerned about the nation's welfare. But it is very distressing to see that the Minister for External Affairs is treating it so lightly. And even when the concerned Chief Minister, Mr. Tarun Gogoi, raised his perfectly justified apprehensions about this issue, it was thought to be brushed aside. Now, all this does not make for confidence in the central government. Naturally, the people are concerned about such issues. And then there is a feeling that the nation is being too soft with Pakistan. There is a feeling that there is an imminent threat from China, which is growing stronger each day as time passes. And not enough is being done about it by the center. It's being taken lightly by the center. And there are apprehensions that Pakistan and Nepal, and China, and Sri Lanka could all gang up together against India. So the people of the country want to feel safe, they want to feel secure, they want to feel reassured that we have a strong, caring government at the center that will ensure the safety, security, and sovereignty of the country. But not enough is being done to allay the apprehensions and fears of the people. In coming days, do you intend to raise these issues more vocally? I remember what you said. I, you know, you did say that uh, I don't just belong to Tamil Nadu. I'm also an Indian citizen. And you did say in your last interview with me that my vision is always national. Strategic issues seem to be your key concern. What about other issues? Off late, you've seen the entire Lokpal agitation and you haven't yet I would like you to give me your views on what you feel is the strong views political parties have against social activism, who they feel don't represent the real views of the people of India, as opposed to democratically elected governments. So very often, we are compared with China. China's progress, particularly industrial and economic progress, is held up as a benchmark to India. And we are seen to be lagging behind China. The difference is China is a totalitarian state. The government can do what it plans, what it proposes to do, and will not brook any opposition. Here we are a democracy. And while I am all for democratic rights, very often we seem to be fighting against ourselves. That is why I said 
the Prime Minister should not be included in the purview of the Lokpal because very often we have seen it happen in our country when someone achieves or someone comes to the office of Prime Minister immediately there are a whole lot of people wanting to pull down that Prime Minister so that has to be safeguarded against at the same time there is nothing wrong with social activism it is the sign of a healthy democracy social activism should be there but not to the extent of running a parallel government was the crackdown on Baba Ramdev in your view the that right was action? totally uncalled for unnecessary totally uncalled for unnecessary Ms. Jalal it could have been handled with greater tact in fact it could have just been ignored that's what you would have done <laughs> I'm not in a position to deal with such events Ms. Jalal there are two ways in which politicians finally and I know uh, can be a, play a role at a national level it's inevitable that you will play a role at the national level there are two ways that is your uh, assessment well it has been the experience in the past it's impossible for any well i take party. it as a compliment thank you very much uh, thank you ma'am but it's impossible I, there is no single party which has been in power in tamil nadu held a majority here and not played a role in national politics however in your case it's slightly different you're not just a regional leader there have been discussions about your own national ambitions and again ms jailalita towards the end of this interview you can choose to underplay it in the past you had people representing your party in Delhi you had differences as a result power sharing formulas with regional parties playing you know a minor role have not been always very successful what about your role at the national level is it impossible to conjecture that you would naturally look at a larger role in New Delhi not just for your party but also for yourself please don't dodge the question I'm not trying to dodge your question I will answer it in my own way I take life as it comes I never planned a career for myself in politics I never had any preparation for a career in politics. I never ever thought that I would be Chief Minister of Tamil Nadu. I never wanted to be Chief Minister either. But somehow I did come to politics and somehow I did become the Chief Minister. Not just once, but three times. So, earlier in your question you referred to national ambitions. Yes. I don't have any national ambition for myself. I have an ambition for my country. I want my country, I want India to be the superpower in the world. Not one of the superpowers, the superpower in the world. It has the potential to be so. But for that, it needs a very strong and patriotic leader at the helm of affairs. But I will repeat that I have no personal ambition for myself. I go where life takes me. I go where destiny takes me. And if I am given a job, I try to give it my utmost. I try to do it well. That's all. I won't press you further. I think you've made your point very well. Ms. Jayalata, it's been an absolute pleasure talking to you. I'm glad you've given us a lot of time. I thank you for speaking to Times Now. Thank you very much. It's been a pleasure speaking to you. Thank you very much, ma'am. Thank you.